Welcome to another Turfgrass webisode from the Turf Program at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm Turfgrass Extension Specialist Bill Kreiser here today to talk about winter kill recovery techniques and specifically an update on what's working in the field. This year has been a banner year for winter kill. We had ice encasement and crown hydration around the Great Lakes region, low temperature uh, and desiccation injury in the south and then to the Great Plains region. Here's a picture of a putting green and fairway that com works completely uh, decimated with desiccation injury this year. Um, it's a creeping bent grass putting green and creeping bent grass fairway uh, and the, the cold, windy, dry conditions here in Nebraska really destroyed that turf. And re regardless of what caused the, the winter kill across the, uh, the continent really, the, the question we all have now is, you know, what's dead? and you know what do I need to reseed and how do I go about seeding the turf grass so that I can get it uh, back and playable as quickly as possible and satisfy our golfers. Uh, and so it's really easy to look at places like this where we're seeing some greening up uh, right next to a really nice green turf and wonder you know how dead is this turf? We're seeing some light green patches here. Is it going to come back um, or is it completely dead and do we need to reseed? A couple weeks ago, I may have said, you know, let's wait it out. But now, as the temperatures are increasing, uh, we're starting to get a real much better sense on what's alive and what's dead. And so, kind of the mantra I've been saying is, let's hope for the best, but let's prepare for the worst. And, you know, seeds cheap is kind of some attitude that we have a fair amount. It may not be cheap if you have to receive the entire golf course, like some people. Uh, but if you have spots, you know, what can we do to try to get some seed in the ground and cover our butts in case the grass is dead? This isn't something that's only specific to the golf courses out there, and I'm just here lecturing um, with you know no real practical experience in, in how to recover uh, from winter kill. This is my 18,000 square foot research green uh, at Mead, Nebraska, uh, and you'll notice that aside from a couple of little green specks here and there, uh, this green is pretty much completely dead. It was thatchy, thatchy bank grass that was particularly hard hit with winter kill this year, uh, and so it's. You know, I'm wondering how am I going to get this green back up and going so I can do my field research this year. And the problem with seed spring, with seeding in the spring is it's so cold, the soils are so cold, the temperatures are, are cold, uh, it's wet, it may not be sunny. And so trying to build up the soil temperatures to kind of uh, get that seed to germinate and establish before it gets to become really, really hot and stressful in the summertime can be much of a challenge. So back in February, we designed an experiment just to kind of see what these pigments might do from a winter kills pr perspective, thinking that maybe the pigments would help to heat up the soil a little bit. So we had uh, went out in February on kind of a sunnier day, um, temperatures were you know, slightly above freezing, and went out with pigments at uh, the pigment foursome at the labeled rate, which is three quarters of an ounce, and then we had a 2x, a 4x, an 8x rate. And then a couple days later, we went out with a thermometer and measured the temperature of the soil at crown depth, so about you know a half inch uh, below the soil, below the surface. And what we found was that the hot, the increase in um, pigment application rate increased our temperature um, by about five degrees Fahrenheit when we're at that eight x rate. So we see a nice green tissue there, and we see that the uh, the soil is a little bit warmer too. So that wasn't all related to our winter kill recovery experiment. But then when we knew we had a lot of dead turf, we thought, you know, what can we do to help to stimulate uh, the, the seeds to grow in the spring? And so we thought maybe the pigments might have uh, an impact. Um, and here's a putting green where they, you know, they put, they had a lot of winter kill from ice and they put down some high rate of pigment and it just helps, you know, again, to increase the soil temperatures because now you don't have those dead leaves just reflecting all the sun's energy away. And it also helps from a golf relations standpoint. I know one superintendent that put pigments down uh, was told that it was one of the best things he's ever done by someone on his greens committee. Uh, and so sometimes it's, it's, you might think, okay, it's just the green paint, um, it's not really useful. But uh, if it makes the grass appear greener, the golfers may love you a little bit more and give you some more leeway, leeway to explain the winter kill. So here's a, we started a winter kill experiment in Nebraska where we wanted to evaluate different covers uh, and then we did it with and without seeds, so we can kind of see, you know, how those plots fill in over the course of the summer, uh, depending on uh, seeding or not seeding, covering or not covering. And then we also had fertility treatments, and so we'll know more about the fertility aspect in a couple of weeks. But we just wanted to kind of highlight what happened with the 
the, um, the germination part, uh, especially earlier on in the spring, uh, and make it really timely since many of you may be uh, seeding right now. Uh, so for our treatments, we had a couple different covers. We had a permeable cover from Green Jacket, and it's a woven material. Water can get through it. Um, then we had a 4 mil plastic sheeting, and we put holes with a pitchfork on about approximately 2 inch centers to help out water and air and gas exchange into that, that 4 mil plastic. We used just some black weed cloth we picked up at a home center, thinking maybe the black material would again help to heat up the soil on below. We did a... Uh, a 4x rate of the foursome pigment, and then we had our non-treated control. We used this tri-wave to seed the bent grass at one pound per thousand at a depth of three eighths of an inch. And then we brushed in the sand debris to bury the seed, and then we rolled the uh, surface to get some good seed to soil contact. After we did that, we put down our tarps with lots of stakes so they wouldn't blow away. And then every couple days, we'd pull you know corners of the tarps to see if we're seeing any germination looking like this. And we saw that, then we uh, started doing our ratings. And so here's kind of the preliminary data showing what we're seeing so far. We got germination under some of our covers 14 days after we seeded. Uh, and so we went out at that time, measured soil temperatures at uh, approximately crown depth, again about a half of an inch. And then we just did a visual rating of germination on a zero to three scale, where zero was no germination, and then one was limited germination, two was moderate germination, and three was complete. And we kind of de deemed it deemed complete when we looked at the tri-wave slits, and we could see that the grass was growing uniformly across that whole slit. Uh, and what we found was that the 4 mil plastic and the uh, permeable cover, even though it's white in color, uh, were, the, the, were the best at increasing the temperature of, of the, uh, the soil at crown depth or where the seed would be in your seed bank. Uh, whereas the, the, the black wheat cloth actually was one of the worst performing um, treatments for a temperature standpoint and uh, the pigment was a little bit better in the control but not too much, um, uh, too much better uh, for temperatures. Um, for seed germination then we found that, that that permeable cover performed the best followed by the 4 mil plastic. Again these covers were left on at all times even on sunny and warmer days because again we're trying to build that heat and that soil stimulate those seeds to germinate. Uh, and the, the black weed cloth, uh, we started to have some germination in there um, and the grass was really chlorotic as you'd imagine being underneath that black fabric and not seeing any sunlight. Uh, and where the pigment didn't really have any much of a benefit over the, the control. Um, the, the permeable cover was by far the best for two reasons. It, had, it increased the heat and it also let water through during the uh, irrigation cycles. So we had the heating of the soil and the irrigation, whereas the 4 mil plastic added the heat and the black weed cloth added the moisture, but it was missing, you know, the other component to help germinate those seeds. But then, you know, three days later, at four, when we pulled all the covers off on the 14, 14 days, on 17 days, all the treatments uh, were consistently the same. We had complete germ nearly complete germination from all of our different treatments, uh, whereas the control, we had barely any uh, germination going on. So. Anything we can do to help increase the soil temperature is going to increase our success in seeding in the spring. Here's kind of a picture of that. You can see some of our treatments here where we had our different covers. And we're seeing the, uh, the lines growing uh, right down the tri-wave slits of uh, the bank grass. And then the control was here. And you'll notice there's just there's barely any uh, seedling germination, if any. We kind of wanted to have run through some best management practices. And the first point is, is seed, seed, seed. Just pound the seed. We know we're not going to get, it's harder to get a good catch um, in the spring, so just getting as much seed down as possible is just going to be a benefit. Also, if you have something like creeping bent grass fairway that needs to be reseeded, consider using a nurse crop like a uh, fine fescue. If you did two pounds of, of, uh, of bent grass seed and you drilled that in, uh, some golf courses out here in Nebraska have found that and then when they go over the top of that in the spring with like six pounds of a, of a fine fescue mix, uh, that provides a really nice nurse crop and then you have a gradual transition as the fine fescue starts to die in the heat and traffic and water of the summer and the bank grass quickly fills in and it's, it's, not, even, it's not even noticeable from when it goes from the fine fescue to the bank grass. So some, consider that. Also if you lost a lot of areas with, with perennial ryegrass, you know, perennial ryegrass is the obvious mix to go back because it's going to germinate quickly versus a Kentucky bluegrass. 
But there's research from John Steyer when he was at University of Wisconsin. It showed that even mixing some bluegrass in in your spring seeding, you're going to get sun to take that to to, uh, to catch hold, and so you're 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 looking better in the future. Try to improve that seed to soil contact. On uh, the rest of my green, we aerated it, top dressed it, and then we tri waved in two directions to try to just get that seed down in there. Uh, we like for our bank grass green to be seeded in at a depth of about three eighths of an inch with our tri wave. Then we rolled it again and top dressed on top of that to to help uh, protect the seeds. You know, use things like covers, sands, or pigments to help uh, you know build up that soil temperature so we can help to pop pop that seed and also use that to you know help hold in some moisture again to help get that seed to germinate. Uh, use a starter fertilizer at seeding or I did mine at germination. Um, you know some kind of a good starter or maybe a greens grade for a putting green is be great to have more uniform coverage over that surface. Uh, and then when the seed germinates start going out with light soluble nitrogen applications. Uh, we like to use a lot of nitrite um, forms because the nitrate, in addition to helping promote the uh, the growth of the plant, it also stimulates the plants to help break dormancy and the seeds to break dormancy. So, using something like potassium nitrate or calcium nitrate or an ammonium nitrate, if you can find that and go go at rates of like you know a tenth of a pound, that will stimulate the grass that is alive to start growing and will start to stimulate that seed to germinate. And then finally, you know, keep your seeds moist and raise that mowing height. You know, uh, we just mowed some of our greens that are that are young at um, 180 thousandths of an inch, and so we're saying keep it higher. Don't start pushing these seedlings. Let's get them to become mature so that we can push them to the summer um, and help them survive the, the real summer stress. So again, here's my research green. This was a picture taken last week. You can see some remnants of our experiment. Uh, we're starting to fill in. And then here's some pictures I took yesterday, which is only five days later, showing the rest of the green where we have tri in two directions. We have a lot of growth going on. Again, I mowed this at, at um, 180 thousandths of an inch. I'm going out with those light soluble fertilizers. I'm going to top dress again to help again, protect the seeds, smooth the surface, and um, further increase the soil, temp soil heating uh, in the spring. You know, a nice crisscross pattern like this works really well when you're seeding because it helps to, uh, to minimize the space the seed has to fill. If you think if you had a square, it'd be hard to fill in the center, but when you have these diamond shapes, the, seed, the, uh, the grass doesn't have to go as far to fill in those voids. To stay up to date with what's going on on our, on our winter killer research, go to uh, turf.unl.edu and you'll find on our, our homepage here that we have a winter kill corner where we have all kinds of resources from things for golfers to a comprehensive guide, to some surveys and other tools that you can use to help with winter killer recovery. Um, for example, here's a here's a, a screenshot of our winter kill comprehensive guide, which you can find on that that, that corner. Uh, and we talk a lot about why winter kill happens, and then what can we do about it. Uh, Dr. Riker brings a lot of information about uh, herbicides you can use to help keep poenia out, uh, and other different weeds um, when you're doing the seeding. Uh, then we also have these these golfer frequently asked questions. There's two versions of it now. There's a, a desiccation version and an ice version. This is a copy of the new ice version. So if you lost grass uh, from ice in the Great Lakes region, this is something that maybe you can hand out to your your membership, uh, post in your clubhouse. You know, maybe put into some kind of a bulletin, um, just to help them understand what's going on and what's going to take to get the grass to recover. Um, if you have any questions. Feel free to contact me, please. That's my contact information here, uh, wchrysler2 at unl.edu. Just give me a call on my office, self, or my office phone here. Um, if you just want to shoot, bounce around ideas, uh, what works, what doesn't work, if you have any questions on something I didn't talk about today or want more information on something, uh, please let me know, and I'll be sure to get back to you right away. Uh, so thank you very much for attending another uh, webisode from the Turfgrass Program at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln.